Bloomberg posted a couple interesting stories recently about Adobe's latest iPad apps. One of them pointed out that many beta users are disappointed in the lack of features in the new iPad version of Photoshop. So today, we're gonna to be talking about that. First of all, this video is not a rant. It's more of a setting of expectations. What are we going to be seeing if Photoshop is released on the iPad in a couple of weeks? And to do that, why don't we dive into the most interesting parts of this article. Photoshop for iPad nearing launch with some key features missing early testers have been disappointed by the rudimentary state of the iPad's version of Adobe's photo app. Participants have told Bloomberg News that some beta versions don't include well-established features they expect to be part of the release. They complained about less advanced or missing features around core functionality like filters, the pen tool, custom paintbrush libraries, vector drawing, color spaces, raw editing, smart objects, layer styles, and certain options for mass creation. Their disappointment about these limitations stem from Photoshop's established reputation as a leader of professional photo editing program on the desktop. Now, if you've been following everything that Adobe has said, or at least Scott Belsky, the, the project manager of this, project manager, probably isn't his job title. It probably has a much cooler job title than that. But if you've been following what he's been saying over the last year in the press, this isn't that surprising. In fact, in a Bloomberg article from last year, he talked about what they were going to be doing with Photoshop. Unfortunately, that article insinuated that full Photoshop, real Photoshop, was coming to the iPad. So it's totally understandable that just by reading that headline, it means that full Photoshop, everything you expect from Photoshop, will be running on the iPad. Not some like mini app with a handful of features that saves PSDs, but in this first iteration, that's exactly what we're going to be getting. It's another clip from that article. Belsky said that the beta feature set won't represent the final version for consumers. And the need to collaborate with Apple meant that a lot of features were, quote, coming in hot ahead of the launch. At launch, he said Photoshop will still lack some familiar features, but that will only represent version one of the product. Some of this is setting expectations, like saying, hey, this isn't all bad news. This is version one. We're going to be rolling out more features as we go. This is not a complete product. In my previous life as a designer, I found myself being like the token designer on software teams. And oftentimes what would happen in, in most agencies that I was working with is there was often a disconnect between what sales and marketing was saying and doing and what the dev team was doing. And I and that, as I read this stuff, that seems like exactly what's going on here at Adobe. This could be really frustrating because the marketing team wants to get out ahead and say, yeah, get excited over this new product. But the dev team is like, whoa, this is going to take time. This is a huge product. We're rolling it out in stages, you know, and you don't really find that out as a consumer who's waiting and expecting this stuff until it actually gets released. Or in this case, maybe a couple weeks before it's released. There was another article written over on Daring Fireball where John Gruber, who, who writes that blog, quotes the Bloomberg article, and then he has some additional insider information, which is pretty interesting. Photoshop for iPad is real because it's using the same code base that's running on the desktop for decades. That's an amazing technical accomplishment. Photoshop for iPad is not full, and the initial release was never planned to be because it only exposes a subset of features from the desktop version. Now, part of that was expected. We didn't expect to get full Photoshop in the first iteration. The part that surprised me, and the part I didn't expect, was that I thought this was a, a basically a rebuilding of Photoshop from the ground up, not a reusing of the core of Photoshop. That, that did surprise me quite a bit. And I'm a little concerned when I hear that because when I think of Photoshop, I think of a, a lot of features and a lot of things holding it back, especially when we're talking about the drawing experience on a touch screen, you know, if you've ever used Photoshop on a Wacom tablet or something like that, and you've tried to like pinch to zoom, it's not fluid like using an iPad. If you're using Procreate, you're used to like things moving quickly and you can pan and zoom really easily. And oftentimes in Photoshop, if you're using a touch screen, it's like chunk, chunk, chunk. It's very slow. The frame rate is low. It's not a fun experience to use. And so what I was really hoping out of this new version of Photoshop is that it would allow them to cut out a lot of the cruft, which is clearly what they were doing, but we would gain a ton of performance and maybe a better engine as a result. But if they're using the same engine, I just hope that doesn't affect performance in any way. He goes on, from what I've heard from multiple reliable sources, Adobe is genuinely all in on Photoshop for the iPad. They view this as a serious top shelf product for creative professionals. The team of engineer working on it has grown significantly from a year ago and they have plans to add features 
iteratively on an aggressive schedule. This gives me hope. Uh, I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad this isn't just going to be a throw it out there and see if it sticks sort of thing like some of the other Photoshop apps we've seen in the years past. One thing that does worry me is, is this idea that it seems like they're trying to rush it out. Not all the features are done, but they want to get something to market. Uh, he mentioned, Scott Belsky mentioned that some of the features are, quote, coming in hot. Um, I'm not sure what that means for stability. You know, obviously software has deadlines. And if they're trying to rush this out in time for Adobe Max at the in early November, I'm not sure that's really the best way to go. I think it's in Adobe's interest instead to delay this into next year or even further if they need to and release something more to complete to impress people. Right now, there is a lot of impressive stuff over on the iPad, whether you're talking about Affinity Designer, they released uh, Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer, which are like 90% feature complete compared to their desktop version apps. So if Photoshop launches and it's only like 5% or 10% there, that's gonna be a lot of bad press. And maybe if you have a Creative Cloud subscription, you're gonna be willing to go back in a year. But this is an opportunity for Adobe to launch something and really impress people and bring people on board. It's gonna be much harder to get this excitement built up six months from now and say, hey, we've added a bunch of new features or a year from now and say, hey, we've, we've added a bunch of new features as they dribble those things out, people are gonna lose interest. You've got you know one shot to make a really big impression, and uh, I'm a little worried that they're gonna be blowing it. I think it might be better for them to delay this, take some bad press early right now in order to get it right for launch. So if Photoshop comes out for the iPad in a couple weeks as it is expected to, just know you're gonna see a lot of negative blog posts, uh, uh, probably a lot of negative videos. I'm definitely gonna be doing a review of it, talking about my experience with it. Uh, if features are coming in hot, we might see a lot of bugs. So just be ready for that. This is not, uh, this is version one. This is not a final version of the product. So this is my hot take. It's actually, it's not hot. This is my cold take. I think this is a long-term play by Adobe. And overall, I think it's a smart idea. I don't think the launch is going to go as well as Adobe is hoping it's going to go. However, I think we need to view this from a long-term standpoint. What is this product going to look like in a year, in two years, in three years. I think the idea of building a new version of Photoshop that works well with touch is gonna to be good. And if they take that as their base and they roll it out to Windows, similar to what they're doing with Fresco, I think this could be really, really good. Speaking of Fresco, I, I feel the same way about it. I'm not really that excited about what Fresco is now. Is it better than Procreate? Heck no, but I'm excited by the promise of what it could be. Its potential is far more exciting than the product we have in our hands right now. Even if you dislike Adobe and you don't like their subscription model, I think having more competition in the iPad ecosystem, in the touch ecosystem in general, is going to be a really good thing. This is going to bring in corporations and companies and people who rely on Adobe's subscription service onto the iPad. This is going to bring people into Windows touch devices and that's just going to continue to bring more money into the infrastructure of the platform and those people are probably going to buy some affinity apps, they're probably gonna buy Procreate. Uh, more money for more app developers means more good stuff for you and me. Also, there was another article, just kind of as a side note, that talked about Adobe working on a version of Illustrator also for the iPad that's going to be available at some point in the future. They might be announcing that in a couple weeks. I think this is a big initiative for them. Uh, I think that I wouldn't be surprised to see them bring all of their software over, over the next couple years, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them do what they're doing with Fresco and then start to move it to Windows Touch devices as well. I think we're seeing a real, you know, kind of evolution of what Adobe's Creative Cloud software can be. Um, I'm I'm excited for the future. I don't think what we have now is, is all that exciting. I think a lot of people are gonna be disappointed, but I, I think if we think five years ahead, what is the world gonna look like? I think this is great stuff. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in a couple of days.